Seperti gonggang So, warm welcome back everybody We're here with Undo Itan uh, And uh, getting ready for another uh, hopefully inspiring talk Where we explore the new world of business And uh, today we are uh, now uh, joined by another uh, international uh, celebrity, I was going to say, uh, a thought leader uh, around the world, uh, Franz Iwansson. Warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, flying in from New York, where you're based. Uh, yeah, actually I came from Houston. I'm Houston, based in New York. You're based in New York. You yeah. came from Houston. Uh, but you have, uh, you have done some great work. Uh, I've read your book, The Medici Effect, for example. You have a new book also coming out, The Click Moment. Uh, great pieces of work. Uh, and speaking of the Medici effect, and speaking of, of Sweden, uh, why don't you are uh, really uh, in the Medici effect? You talk about the uh, intersections. Yes. How you uh, cross uh, different cultures or disciplines or people, or and uh, you yourself are, are uh, a result of an intersection, I guess, with a Swedish father. <laughs> yes. Well, that's true. Uh, my uh, my parents are really uh, they. They've crossed uh, boundaries across cultures, countries, uh, ethnicities. Uh, my my dad is Swedish. My my mom's from uh, the states, and she's black, black and Cherokee, yeah. actually. And uh, and what I discovered early was that um, in these in this intersection between different uh, cultures and countries and uh, and ethnicities, uh, were all kinds of new ideas that could come to life. I think that informed my way of thinking uh, for the rest of my life. How, I mean, can you, you've had a, for those people, a lot of people think I've never heard about the Medici effect, uh, but for those people who don't know you, maybe you want to tell briefly your story, because you're not only an author of uh, some pretty uh, cool books, you've started a couple of companies, you've done uh, some research, you come from the environment field, and yeah, I want to Sure, to yeah. Brief, um, brief background. Well, I mean, uh, this idea, this notion that intersections between different fields and cultures and disciplines are very powerful places of innovation, yeah. uh, was further reinforced uh, during my during my academic years. I studied environmental science, and that's really um, in order to do that, you need to bring together uh, knowledge from lots of different disciplines. And I could see the power of doing that. Actually, I started a magazine uh, at that point, an interdisciplinary science magazine, and it was exploring all kinds of different innovative ideas. And it's still around, actually. It's celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. And now, um, that in turn inspired me to explore innovative ideas more generally. I started a healthcare company, and then I started a software company after business school. Uh, and, then, uh, and then ultimately, in the middle of all of that, I got the idea for the Medici Effect. And the Medici Effect basically says, that you have the best chance of breaking new ground when you combine ideas from different fields, different industries, different cultures. So if you're an architect, uh, you might say, well, I want to look for new ideas from an architecture. Uh, and that's fine, of course. You could talk to other architects to come up with ideas, and that's great. But the true breakthroughs happen when you're able to intersect architecture with something else. And in the book, I describe this architect who drew the science and inspiration from how termites build their uh, mounds of the African savanna, and was then able to build buildings that are super sustainable uh, out of that. Uh, and we see this over and over again. Um, uh, innovators that that, uh, that break new ground, companies, entrepreneurs, uh, artists, scientists, they all look for ideas outside of their field of expertise. And so ultimately, there was so much interest around this that uh, besides sort of going around talking about this to companies all over the world, uh, I started, I started a company myself to be able to assist strategically these other um, corporations in helping them innovate. Yeah, fantastic. How come people are, because I, I agree uh, that people are really poor at uh, stepping outside the box and outside their field, uh, yet there's so, still ample of, uh, evidence that it's yes. actually, you know, the true innovations are there. How come? How come are not more you know, companies there are doing it? Th there's, there are a lot of different reasons why, actually. Um, uh, uh, particularly if you look at it from a company perspective, a company is really a machine designed to do what it does really well. So it figured out this is what we can do, we can sell this, we can make this, we can service that, we can cater, we can show, we can whatever it is, and then it 
focus is becoming extremely good at doing that. And so every decision it makes supports that. The people they hire, the departments it sets up, and so on. Which means that it also becomes extremely good at killing any idea that doesn't support that idea. Um, but there are different ways of operating. Um, uh, but before I get to that, let me also say that it's not just on a company structure way. It's also on a human mind way. It's on your own, how you think about yourself. Sure. We are both sometimes a little bit too afraid to try things that we don't know for sure are going to work. And when you step into an intersection, uh, you know, you're like, wait, wait a minute, termites, termites in architecture? Are you sure? Like, am I going to waste my time? So we're afraid of doing that. And, and if we want to innovate, we have to be prepared to make mistakes. Uh, which is which is sort of a big reason uh, why we why we why we keep ourselves uh, locked in. Um, uh, another reason is that well, we're kind of lazy. Mm -hmm. So if we know that this works and it works well, and even if I do know, as you said, that I should really reach out to others to try to get some new perspectives, and eh, it's hard work. It takes time. You have to get to know somebody else. It might as well just do what you already do and tweak it just a little bit. That's those are some reasons why. What are some of the most? Because uh, it obviously it does work. Uh, you mentioned a couple of examples. What are some of the other inspiring? You work now with some of the uh, yeah, truly inspiring companies around the world. Uh, what, what are some good examples that can uh, show these people that? Hey, you, well, you I mean, do you know, okay. so, first of all. Um, uh, it is true. We work with some absolutely exceptional companies around the world in in helping them innovate. You know, Disney and Nike and uh, and uh, Electronic Arts, Nice, which is a Swedish video game yeah. um, uh, company, actually, um, uh, pharma companies, AstraZeneca, and so on. Uh, and and I think that is that is extremely exciting because they are sort of on an innovative edge, but they need to push further. Uh, but I'm not always sure that, that is a great, a great inspiration for an individual because that's a corporation. You're like, okay, so you look at it. We did some work with Google. Okay, so you're not Google. Well, Google is a big, 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 big company that have been extremely successful. Yes, one can get inspiration from that. But I also like to get inspiration from other examples, um, uh, individuals. You know, one of my favorite stories, I'm going to tell, talk about this today at, the, um, at, the, at this conference, is uh, Ingrid Bakkeris, who created the ICE Hotel. And the journey he took to credit is really a journey that as long as you just have some, some level of imagination mm -hmm. and you just don't give up, then most people can go on that journey. He didn't come up with Ice Hotel right away and just made it. Now he came up with this idea that he tested and that didn't really work, then he tried something else and tested it and that didn't really work, and then he tried something else and tested it and that didn't really work, and then he tried something and that was Ice Hotel. Well, that's something that as long as we're just willing to keep going, if it doesn't work, we keep trying, then that's something that most people that are listening to this could try. Sure. And we have, uh, I mean, we're here in, in Gothenburg at the World Innovation Challenge, and another person joining us has also been featured in these talks is uh, Mohamed Yunus. Yes. And he was pretty creative and innovative some 30, 40 years ago when he came up with a green bank. Absolutely. Uh, changing the games of how banking or finance. Microcredits could work, and 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 even with that story, right? You're looking at somebody who is. Uh, if you look at his story carefully, you will see that tons of mistakes. We when we look at somebody like Ernest, we must say, "Wow, he's so inspirational." How can I even like, com like compare it to that? And yeah, he's inspirational, of course. But we say that after the fact. We say it because he came up with something that changed the world. But it is possible for for most of us that if we just try if we keep trying then we might eventually hit upon something that will make a difference and that's what he tried over and over and over green bank did not work when he the, his first try and it didn't not his second not his third his fourth he kept trying and that piece that that insight that persistence is so critical to success is is uh is very powerful you know i uh the the app um the, the, the game uh, Angry Birds. It's one of the most successful games of all time. And uh, downloaded over a billion times. And you look at it, you go, yeah, I know why. Because it's so well designed, uh, it was addictive, it really created a revolution in mobile games. It was a Finnish company that made it, Rovio. 
Uh, and people look at that and go, wow, I mean, they know what they're doing. Except, I mean, if they were that sure what they were doing, uh, why did they wait eight years to do it? Because Rovia was around for eight years before they started. Angry Birds was their 52nd game. You haven't heard of the other 51 games. If you, or myself, anybody listening to this tried something 52 times, I'm pretty sure they were a good shot at greatness as well. Most people pro uh, probably around the world listen to this, but also here, uh, obviously in Sweden, uh, we're, we're doing pretty good. I mean, Sweden uh, uh, known for a lot of things, uh, and we're doing a pretty good job with uh, technology and innovation. We come up with, uh, if it's not uh, even the Finnish game, Angry Birds, so there's a bunch of Swedish examples sure. too. So we do a pretty good job, but at the same time, we're a pretty you know, we're not the typical out of the box type of people. We are pretty conforming in a way, aren't we? And a little bit careful. How, how, what, what is your view on that? How do we? Well, I mean, uh, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that Sweden could achieve so much more uh, in terms of innovation. I think that the saving grace for Sweden, the, the reason Sweden is able to remain as innovative as we are, is because Swedes have a tradition of traveling all over the world constantly. You compare it to Norwegians, you compare it to the Finns, you compare it to the Danes, for instance. If you just take those three countries around us, we're traveling far, far more, which means that when we come back, we've seen more. We are more open for new experiences. We're more open to try and test things. Um, uh, and so, sweets can be inside the box, but uh, we're also willing to sort of take in expressions from our travels. And, I believe that has been one of the one of the reasons why we've, we've consistently been able to sort of uh, be flexible and, and, and try new things. Um, that said, we are extremely poor at being able to understand how to bring in new perspectives here. We have we have the world in Sweden. That those connections not being made. I spend a lot of time talking about how diversity drives innovation. A diversity of perspectives, cultures, countries, um, gender, uh, fields, industries, and so on as well. And we're not good at it here in this country. It could be a lot better. Moving back beyond uh, Sweden, uh, if we gaze into the world, what's going on? It's 2015, uh, important year, many people say, uh, with uh, global leaders meeting all over the place uh, in South by this summer. Right. And, uh, and so forth, things happening in uh, New York, of course, and uh, December. Climate, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a For big Paris. year. Uh, what sort of world do you see? Well, I'm not so sure I would be able to uh, predict it. I, 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 s I have a lot of hope for the future. I, I believe that um, it's a world where people can get together, share experiences, and build on those, and where it's much more it's much easier for any one individual person to make a difference. At the same time, I'm also seeing things sort of becoming, uh, uh, I'm seeing a tremendous amount of change. A tremendous amount of change and we're not prepared for it. In Sweden, for instance, we're seeing it. We're not prepared for diversity. Swedes don't even understand what to do about the concept of diversity. Well, that's happening all over the world. But you also see technological change that's happening at a furious pace. Sure. What is you know, before a uh, technology would replace an animal, a car would replace a horse. Now it's re now it's simply replacing humans, and and so you go back and forth on that. That's fantastic. You know, you you have you get uh, whatever the app is, and and it'll help you. But at the same time, when the speed of change is that high, you have to wonder how society is going to handle it. Fundamentally. I'm an optimist. I'm very much an optimist. I believe that we will overcome the challenges around climate change. We will overcome uh, the challenges around poverty. We will overcome uh, many of the huge challenges that we're facing. We'll overcome a division between cultures and ethnicities. Uh, but I believe that we are also impatient and that that impatience will keep on creating a tremendous amount of tension. And it's good that we're impatient. Impatience is fantastic. It's just, it means that that's, that creates tension. That's where we come in. Innovators 
have a shot of driving that change. If we do that well, if we, we say, let's go back here in Sweden uh, in 10 years from now, 2015, uh, 2025, let's say, uh, what sort of uh, what type of companies and sort of business world would you like to be besides uh, those, let's say, macroeconomic that we saw in the climate change issues and, and, uh, and race poverty, etc.? What, what type of uh, more innovative, yeah, what type of uh, business life would you like to be part of or contribute to in the next 10 years? <laughs> I mean, it's I, my 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 goal has always been to create a really a way of understanding, a way of thinking about innovation that people can take in, and that is anchored in the notion of diversity. I want to, in ten years from now, I want to be in a world where people are eagerly reaching out to those different from themselves. They're eagerly trying to break down whatever boundaries they have around them, and to, to innovate. I can't tell you how that's going to hit for any given industry. Industries are being born and they're killed off at an incredible rate right now. You know, taxis, uh, five years ago, nobody could really predict that they would be in trouble. Well, with companies like Uber and so on coming in, they are. Okay, now, or, or at least we have to redefine what it means to be something like a taxi. Um, so industries will be born and, um, and, and, and fall away, like it always has happened, just faster. Um, but the world I'd like to see is one where the people being players in this, they are making connections to those that are different from themselves. Mm -hmm. And in those connections, they're creating a new world. Franz? Awesome. Great to meet you. Thank you. You guys as well. Thank you as always for tuning in. Uh, go out there and uh, chase intersection and diversity. Pick up Francis' books, uh, The Mediature Effect or The Click Moment, and keep exploring the beautiful world we have. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Have a go.